What would you like for dinner tonight? Oh, I'm afraid I can't make dinner, Nat. Really? Yeah, I'm chairman of a new committee they're forming to help dropouts. We may be meeting late. What's a dropout? Now, what do you think it is, son? A parachute is coming down in enemy territory? <laughs> a dropout is a student who quits school. Oh, boy. How can I get to be one? Just keep up the grades you've been getting. Seriously, that's no laughing matter. Thousands of students are dropping out of high school before they get their diplomas. It's a terrible waste. Kathy, where's Patty? Oh, she's coming out, Natalie. Say, Kath, I just got an idea. How would you and Patty like to serve as student advisors to our anti-dropout committee? I'd love to, Uncle Martin, and I'm sure Patty would. Why didn't you ask her? You know, that's a wonderful idea, having students on the committee. I think I'll bring it up at the meeting tonight. Two of you could talk to students at their own level. Fine. Patty, we'll be late. I'm ready. Let's bus, cuz. Patty, how would you like to serve on a committee to help stop school dropouts? Oh, gee, Papa, I'm afraid you picked a bad time to ask me. Why? Because I'm dropping out of school next week. <laughs> Meet Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Kathy's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But they're cousins, identical cousins all the way. The adores a minuet, the ballet russe, and crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll, a hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet, still their cousins, identical cousins, and you find. They laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. Hi, Patty. Hi, Rich. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you, too. Are you still going through with it? You bet I am. It's all set. I'll tell you about it this afternoon. Can you meet me at the uh, shake shop after school? Sure. Hello, Richard. Hi, Kathy. Bye now. Will you stop running for a minute and talk to me? Long and you so. I've been trying to catch up with you all morning. You can't just announce you're quitting school and then run away. I didn't think everybody would get so excited about it. Excited? Your mother and father are in a state of shock. I'll explain it all to them when I get home. You're going to explain it to me right now. Later. Now. Patty, I don't understand you. You were looking forward to going to college. We'd plan to go to the same college, share the same dormitory. I know. Well, then what is it? It's old Noodlehead. <laughs> Who? Richard the Chicken-Hearted. He's dropping out of school next week. He can't drop out of school. He's going to be a doctor. He changed his mind. He decided he'd rather be a millionaire. He's starting next week. <laughs> Patty, you've got to stop him. I've tried every argument I can think of, but I can't budge him. So I figured I'd trick him. By quitting school. I'm not quitting school. But I can't let Richard know that. When I tell him I'm dropping out, he'll be so shocked it'll bring him right back to his senses. I see. That's a marvelous idea. I got it from our family motto. If you can't lick them, outthink them. You want the check? Uh, no, I'm waiting for someone, Harry. Bring me another soda. Only this time make it a cherry soda. They say American kids are soft. <laughs> oh, and while you're at it, uh, bring me another sandwich. Another cheeseburger on a bun with the Russian dressing, tomatoes and mustard? Uh, no, make it an egg salad on pumpernickel with mayonnaise and hot peppers. <laughs> an egg salad on pumpernickel with mayonnaise and hot peppers. Right. It's your stomach. Uh, what do you mean by that? Yeah, nothing. I'll bring it right away. I don't want to make you late for dinner. <laughs> How'd you do in the physics exam? Who wants to be a physicist? I didn't do so well either. <laughs> She's over there waiting for you. Old faithful. Long and Yoso. Hi, Rich. Oh, where have you been? I want my third soda. Oh, I got tied up. I'm sorry. Oh, what's going on? It's all set. I'm going out Monday and look for a job. Doing what? Oh, anything. Just so I start near the top. 
That's where the money is. Have you told your father yet? Not yet. He's got a very low boiling point. He's a real screamer. Does your father act like that? No, he's the quiet type. Gets that real hurt look on his face. I'll take the screamer any day. Parents are funny. They keep saying it's your life, but they keep telling you how to live it. But nobody's gonna tell me I have to finish school. No one can force you to get an education. Right. Richard, I've been thinking about what you said about school being a waste of time and who needs it. Yeah. And I've decided to drop out, too. You? Drop out? <laughs> you're kidding. No, I'm serious. I figured if you're going to drop out, I'm going to drop out. You would do that for me? Patty, that's the most wonderful thing I ever heard of. <laughs> so I figured if I told him I was dropping out of school, he'd say, I won't let you do it, Patty. No, sir. If you feel that strongly about it, I'm going to continue school. I'm going to go to college and become a doctor. And you told him? Yeah. What did he say? He said it was the best news he ever heard in his life. I, I can't understand why he's quitting. Last week, he spent a whole evening talking about how excited he was about being a doctor. Yeah. He said he was going to join the WHO. Who? The World Health Organization. And go to some remote jungle in Africa and help all the poor natives. That doesn't sound like a boy who's interested in becoming a millionaire overnight. I know. He's changed his whole basic personality. In a week? Well, you can't explain, Richard Popo. You just have to accept him. Well, I'm not accepting any youngster who drops out of high school. Our society is getting more complicated every day. Without a high school diploma, no one has much chance of getting ahead. Now, that's what I told Richard, but I couldn't get through to him. His head is made of solid oak. You know, maybe I could get through to him. Would you try? Why don't you ask him here for dinner tomorrow night? Well, that's great, Papa. Um, if it's okay with you. Of course it is. Fortunately, there's a sale at the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, may I have another piece of cake? Oh, uh, while you're at it. Oh, certainly, Richard. That makes four. But who's counting? <laughs> Papa, guess who I ran into today? Dr. Fayer. Oh? Yeah, he's receiving some kind of a medal for a Doctor of the Year. That's wonderful. His family must be terribly proud. When you think of all the people he's helped and lives he's saved. I guess the medical profession must be just about the greatest one there is. Dedicating yourself to your fellow man. Uh, could I have another glass of milk? Certainly, Richard. Oh, by the way, Natalie, I ran into uh, old Tim Newton today. Tim Newton? You remember Tim Newton, my old boyhood buddy? Oh, Tim Newton, of course. How is he? Oh, he's in terrible shape. What's the matter with him? Well, he's been having a very hard time of it. You know, Tim dropped out of high school before he finished. He got a job instead. Things went along fine for a while, but then he began to find that the good jobs were going to the men with high school and college educations. Everybody was moving up the ladder of success but Tim. That's terrible, Uncle Martin. When I saw him, he just lost another job. He'd been replaced by a machine. Oh, uh, what's he do, Mr. Lane? Oh, odd jobs. They have a machine that does odd jobs? Boy, I sure love to see it. <laughs> I guess it must be pretty rough getting anywhere with a without a high school education. Old man Blair dropped out of school, and he's having a pretty tough time of it. That's just what I was saying. What does he do? N nothing. It's my point exactly. He's retired. He made about $20 million, bought a house in Florida, and now he doesn't know what to do with himself all day. <laughs> hey, there's a great new picture at the Orpheum. Seven empty coffins. Why don't we just stay in tonight, Richard? 
That's a good idea. You all go on into the living room. I'll clear the table. Okay. Ross, you can help me. I didn't need that much. Why don't I give you the money instead? Ross. Why don't I help Mom with the dishes? <laughs> Richard, I've been wondering, uh, which college were you planning to attend? Winoka. Oh. I've changed my mind, though. I'm not going to college. As a matter of fact, I'm dropping out of high school next week. Really? Yeah, school's a drag. Well, I, uh, I can understand that. Uh, I suppose if you're getting low grades, it's just not very interesting. Low grades? I have a B-plus average. Oh. Well, are, are you having trouble with one of your teachers? No. They're okay. You don't like the school? School's pretty good. Weren't you going to be a doctor? That's before I grew up. <laughs> Who wants to be gotten out of bed in the middle of the night to take care of some neurotic who has a stomach ache. Well, if you feel that way about it, then you shouldn't be a doctor. I'm not gonna be a doctor. Well, that's too bad, Richard. I think you would have made a fine one. Uh, it takes too long to build up a practice. I want to start making money now. Is that so important? You bet it is. I want to make a lot of money, and I want to make it fast. What about all those sick natives? I was just talking. They don't really mean anything to me. Look, if you people got me here to talk me into staying in school, you're wasting your time. If you think I'm going around with a boy who's only interested in money, then you're wasting my time. Well, nobody said you had to go around with me. That's right. And I won't. Well, well that's fine with me, too. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry, too, Richard. Uh, we're all a little upset about you dropping out of school, you know. Look, may maybe if we discuss... There's this... nothing to discuss, sir. Isn't your family going to be terribly upset? Well, for a while, I guess. But they'll get over it. Will you? I wish everybody would stop acting as though I'm committing some kind of crime. But don't you think it's a crime to waste human intelligence? I'll be using my intelligence. Let me ask you another question, Richard. Do you honestly think it's more important to use your intelligence in making money than it is to use it in, in developing a skill that would help people who badly need your help? I think money is more important. I see. Well, there's, there's nothing more for me to say then, is there? No, sir. I, I guess not. Will you say goodbye to Patty for me? Of course. Probably won't be seeing you people again. Um, uh, thanks a lot for the dinner, Mrs. Lane. You're welcome. Well, uh, goodbye, sir. Richard said to... I was listening. I've been so wrong about it. I was actually planning to go into the jungles and help him with the sick natives. Do you know who's sick? Me. I should have my fuzzy head examined. Patty, do you think that Richard could have some special reason for needing money that we don't know about? Sure. Greed. Let's just forget it. Richard's father owns a big construction company. There's no excuse for this. I'm just going to see how fast I can forget about Richard. Hey, look at this. What is it? That's the reason Richard's dropped out of school. Two million dollars? Martin, his father's gone broke and he didn't want anyone to know. Patty! Imagine him going to work to help his family. And all the terrible things that were said. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. I have wonderful news. Richard's father has lost all his money. <laughs> now that we know the truth, what are we going to do about it? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going over to Richard's house on my hands and knees. Can I watch? Every time he needed me most, I walked out on him. You didn't know, Patty? All that talk about how he was interested in money and didn't care about helping people. 
He's the most generous boy I've ever known. It must be killing him to give up medicine. They must be desperate if they're allowing Richard to quit school and go to work. Isn't there anything we can do, Uncle Martin? I don't know, Kath. Uh, Richard's father's in the construction business. I think he's used to pretty big jobs. At a time like this, I'm sure he'd be grateful for even a small job. Well, cement walk in our patio is cracked. We don't really need a new walk, but uh, I guess to help him out, we can let him put one in for us. Let's. And weren't Harriet and Marvin talking about putting a wall around their garden? And Sam and Celia said their driver was full of holes. Call him, Papa, please. All right. Now, uh, what's his name again, Jonathan? Right. I want to finish this stretch from here to Flagstaff by the 15th so we can move the crew up to Utah and get started on the project up there. Do you see any problems? We should be able to do it, Mr. Harrison, now that we're out of that turnpike contract. The suckers that take that over won't get more than a million or two profit out of it. The Utah deal is five times as big as that. Harrison? Hello, Mr. Harrison. This is Martin Lane. Say, so listen, I'm sorry to bother you so late, but I need a favor. That's all right. What can I do for you? Well, I have some cracks in my patio walk. Cracks in your patio walk? <laughs> yes, now I know you don't usually handle jobs that small, but I wonder if you could come over and take a look at it. He wants me to come over and take a look at the cracks in his patio walk. What for? What for? <laughs> I'd like you to repair them as a special favor. He wants me to repair it as a special favor. He must be broke. <laughs> I'd be glad to come over and take a look at it. Oh, I certainly appreciate that, Jonathan. Tell him about Sam and Celia. Oh, and some friends of mine have holes in their driveway. One of his friends has holes in his driveway. He sounds like he has holes in his head. Could be. His daughter goes with my son. <laughs> well, why don't I come over there tomorrow? I'd appreciate that. Invite him to dinner. Yeah. Could we give you dinner? He wants to give me dinner. Ask him what they're having. What do you... What do you say we make it after dinner? Say about nine. Fine. I'll see you then. Bye. You're going over there? Yes. Poor devil. He and his friends must be pretty hard up to go around asking for charity. That newspaper game must be pretty rough. <laughs> There. What have you got there? Some fudge for Richard. What has he done wrong now? Ha, ha, ha. Just for that, you can't come visit us in the jungle. <laughs> Promise? I bet it really happens. Why not? You can make anything happen if you want it badly enough. Maybe I'll become a nurse so I can help Richard. I can see me now at his side while he's operating. There's an emergency. Calling Dr. Harrison. Dr. Harrison, please. <laughs> come rushing down the car. There you are, doctor. There you are, nurse. We should stop the only ones in the world who can save him. Scout. Scout. Forceps. Forceps. Oh. Looks bad. Yes, it does. Good heavens. Do you know what's wrong with this patient? Yes. He has lumps. And he's not the only one. Oh, there's Mr. Harrison. Come on. And remember, they're a very proud family. No matter what he does, he's doing us a favor. Otherwise, they'd never accept it from us. Good evening, Martin. Hello, Jonathan. I certainly appreciate you taking the time to come over here. That's all right. I figured it must be pretty important to you or you wouldn't have asked me. That's right. Come in. Uh, you all know Mr. Harrison. Yes. Hello, Mr. Harrison. Good evening, Mr. Harrison. Hello, everybody. Um, would you like some fruit? No, no, thank you. Is Richard here? No, he isn't. Would you believe it? I haven't seen that boy since yesterday. Neither have I. Maybe he's run away from home. <laughs> no. No, he would have asked to borrow the car. <laughs> well... How's the newspaper game? A little slow? Slow? Well, I suppose at this time of the year, there's not too much happening. <laughs> sure, a lot of businesses are seasonal. The trick is, is not to let it get you down. Well, that's a wonderful philosophy. When things get tough, we just can't quit. That's right. 
That, that's a wonderful spirit. I'm glad you feel that way. <laughs> now, if, you, if you'd like to take a look at the patio, it's right out this way. I'll be glad to. You'd never know it. He seems so well dressed. Keeping up a front. Poor man. You can always tell. <laughs> I'm glad we're able to help him. So am I. Well, what do you think? Oh, you've got cracks all right. I'll send a man over to repair them. That's really nice of you, Jonathan. Glad to help you out, Martin. Uh, Mr. Harrison, as long as you're helping us out, here's a few more jobs we have for you. What's this? Oh, walls, cracking ceilings, walks. This neighborhood's in terrible shape. There are enough jobs to keep you busy for months. I don't do this kind of work. I'm a construction engineer. Oh, we know that. But you see, these people are very good friends of ours, and they would appreciate it if you would help them out by taking on this work. Well, if it would really help you out. Oh, it will. Well, then I'll send a crew over tomorrow. That's really a load off my mind, Jonathan. It's a load off my mind, too. Now Richard won't have to quit school. <laughs> what did you say? I said, now Richard won't have to... He hasn't told you yet. Richard's quitting school. Well, he was thinking about it. He never said a word to me. He's a very proud boy. If he has any problems, why doesn't he come to me? I'm a warm, understanding father. <laughs> what would you have done if he told you? I'd have killed him. <laughs> why would he do a crazy thing like this, dropping out of school? Well, he was trying to help you. Help me what? When Richard heard you lost all your money, the first thing he did was go out and get a job. Lost all what money? The two million dollars in the paper, I suppose. In what paper? I didn't even notice it. All my small losses go through one of my holding companies. <laughs> you, you mean you're not broke? Me? Broke? I'm too rich to go broke. <laughs> Why would Richard think you lost your money? Because I have a big mouth, Mrs. Lane. <laughs> Richard is always asking for something. A new car, a bigger motor. Why don't I buy a yacht? It's crazy with these kids today. In our day, give us a top and a string and we have a good time. The other night, Richard asked me to increase his allowance. No, he didn't say increase it, he said double it. <laughs> Just then the phone rings and it's my superintendent. And he tells me that we're, we're losing, um, how much was it? Two million dollars. Two million dollars on this little turnpike job. So I turned to Richard and I said, there you are. I've lost two million dollars and I'm wiped out and you're asking for a bigger allowance. <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, he'll never make a businessman. On that tax loss alone, I'll make money. Mr. Harrison, I don't think Richard wants to be a businessman. He wants to be a doctor. And he was willing to give all that up when he thought you were in trouble. Well, that crazy kid never said a word to me. When I get home, I'll... Yes? I'll give him enough money to buy his own hospital. <laughs> You all set for the little old basketball game? All set for the little old basketball game. I bet old Marble has mad, isn't he? My cutting in on his girl. Oh, hi there. I was just telling Patty you're a loser. Just couldn't hang on to her, could you? Well, you can't win them all. Uh, all set, baby? All set, baby. Hi. See ya. Get moving. Seven empty coffins goes on in ten minutes. Okay. Poor Kathy. <laughs> Remind me to do something extra special nice for her tomorrow. <laughs> Here's 
Here's Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair! But they're cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find. They laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. What would you like for dinner tonight? Oh, I'm afraid I can't make dinner, Nat. Really? Yeah, I'm chairman of a new committee they're forming to help dropouts. We may be meeting late. What's a dropout? Now, what do you think it is, son? A parachute is coming down in enemy territory? <laughs> a dropout is a student who quits school. Oh, boy! How can I get to be one? Just keep up the grades you've been getting. Seriously, that's no laughing matter. Thousands of students are dropping out of high school before they get their diplomas. It's a terrible waste. Kathy, where's Patty? Oh, she's coming out, Natalie. Say, Kath, I just got an idea. How would you and Patty like to serve as student advisors to our anti-dropout committee? I'd love to, Uncle Martin, and I'm sure Patty would. Why didn't you ask her? You know, that's a wonderful idea, having students on the committee. I think I'll bring it up at the meeting tonight. Two of you could talk to students at their own level. Fine. Patty, we'll be late. I'm ready. Let's buzz, cuz. Patty, how would you like to serve on a committee to help stop school dropouts? Oh, gee, Papa, I'm afraid you picked a bad time to ask me. Why? Because I'm dropping out of school next week. <laughs> Meet Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But they're cousins, identical cousins all the way. One pair of matching bookends, different as night and day. Where Kathy adores a minuet, the ballet russe and crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll, a hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet, still they're cousins. They laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. Hi, Penny. Hi, Rich. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you, too. Are you still going through with it? You bet I am. It's all set. I'll tell you about it this afternoon. Can you meet me at the uh, shake shop after school? Sure. Hello, Richard. Hi, Kathy. Bye now. Will you stop running for a minute? 